Welcome back for another fun-filled fact sort of video. Uh, sorry my video production is not up to snuff like other YouTubers. And sorry that for some reason in these videos my head looks abnormally large, doesn't it? I think it's because I tend to lean towards the, uh, when I use my cell phone, I tend to lean towards the cell phone, which puts my body in the back, which looks my, my head look pretty big. But anyway, um, I think you'll be able to handle it. So again, another simple video. Uh, I want to do one on how your body digests calories. And I think there's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there. My very quick introduction to this is this all started by me hearing people on different videos and blogs saying that backpacking is like an endurance sport. Shouldn't we be doing what endurance athletes do? And it's a big fat yes and no. I think a lot of backpackers, maybe even most packers, don't even come close to approaching like endurance sport sort of level. Yes, they might backpack every single day, but they're not hitting that same physical stress. Um, I think who does hit that physical stress are people that are newish and oldish, not in age, but in experience. So people who are new, who are going out on the trail and really pushing themselves for the first time, their back is, has way too much stuff, their body has a lot of stress, and then people who are wicked in shape and are putting in 20, 25 miles a day. Um, those people in the middle, you, you can eat a birthday cake while you're hiking, it doesn't matter. But for those other people who are feeling a lot of stress, um, I think a lot of these facts will be interesting for you. Um, also keep in mind, a lot of these facts, and I might keep forget. I'm gonna forget to say it for all the, some, some of the facts. A lot of these numbers I did for me that I keep in mind when I'm doing my meal plans. And I'm six foot, 200 pounds. And so um, if you are smaller, these numbers are going to change. If you're larger, they're not gonna change so much unless you're much larger. Um, but otherwise, if you're like 160 pounds, you can really, you can cut off a lot, you know, do the research, change the numbers. So, um, I think I've got a grand total of 22 facts about how your body processes calories. A couple of them are repeats from the hydration video, but I'll give it a little bit of a twist. So, fact number one, your body can only burn 60 grams of carbohydrates and about 270, I'm sorry, wow, I made a mistake already. Your body can only process 60 grams of carbohydrates and about 275 calories an hour. Again, that's my size. So those numbers would be a lot lower if you're saying, you know, 140, 150 pounds. So as soon as you start consuming more than that, you're just putting a lot of stress on your digestive system. Your digestive system is not sucking out all the nutrients it can from that food. And so you're wasting your time. Um, so again, my magic number that I keep in my head is 60 grams of carbohydrates and 275 calories an hour that I try to consume. Um, if you are really pushing it, your body can only replace about a third of what it's using. And so, you know, you, you kind of sometimes hear these people say, well, I, I've burned 4,000 calories, I've burned all these calories. You can't actually eat that number of calories while you're backpacking. Your body just can't process it. Um, you know, at night, your digestive system will slow things down and it will suck more out of the food. Um, but while you're actually like, you know, hoofing it down the trail, your body still is gonna keep that, those magic numbers. Um, and so you could start ingesting 500 calories an hour. And it's, it's not like you're getting 500 calories an hour. Um, so fact number three, the type of carbohydrate that you take in, your body will process them at different speeds. So um, fructose, for example, it can digest about a seventh of a, a, seventh, a seventh of a gram, sixth of a, 0.6 grams. Um, I lost it, per minute. 0.6 grams per minute. Um, glucose is going to be faster. Part of that is where they are digested. So fructo fructose is digested further down in your gut. Um, so that's why it takes longer. Glucose is processed up or uh, higher. Um, it depends on how those two are tied together and the food that you're eating. Um, but uh, if you've ever looked at your gel products and some sports, uh, you know, performance sort of products that you might buy, you'll see the ingredient malodextrin. If you're really looking for something that will give you that, that energy constantly as you're going, malodextrin tends to be the number one thing. It's processed in your body very quickly. And um, that is why it's the preferred um, sugar in you know, sports gels and different types of you know, high endurance athlete bars and things like that. Um, fun fact number four. And I said this in the hydration video, it's worth repeating. Your body can process 100 calories for every 12 ounces of liquid. 
So if you are going to eat, you know, 300 calories, then you need to be drinking 36 ounces of water. Now, just keep in mind that your body can't produce, can't um, pr um, process that amount of water in an hour. So you could be drinking, 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 but your body's not sucking it in. So again, you know, it, it seems kind of silly, but you kind of have to keep it down sometimes. During those times when you think you should be eating the most and drinking the most is actually when you have to like moderate yourself so that you're not stressing out your body. Um, number five. Uh, eating uh, a sugary high glycemic index food when you're when you are uh, backpacking is not the same as if you ate it after I don't know you know at, at work at lunch or something like that. Your body is going to produce insulin much differently and process that sugar much differently when you are stressing your body. It's going to go more immediately right into your muscles. Your your body is saying, all right, we need this now. And that is different than if you were sitting at your desk at lunch having work and your body's taking in the sugar and it's like, whoa, what do we do with this? That, that it changes very differently. So eating that high sugary stuff while backpacking, while you're actually backpacking and pushing your body, that is not a, a big no-no. And that's when I think sometimes you'll hear people say, you know, calories, calories, sugar, sugar, you can survive on candy and stuff. It is if you are pushing yourself um, and it, it's getting processed like that. And just to throw in um, fun fact number six, if you do want to reduce the glycemic index of the calories that you're taking in, you throw in a pro some pro um, protein or fat, and that will bring down the glycemic index of whatever you are eating. Um, fun fact number seven, and I think, you know what, I kind of already said this one. Um, when you are putting your body under a lot of stress when you're backpacking, your body will go into, your digestive system kind of goes into a survival mode, and it does not want to take in a big meal. It wants to, it could just do a little bit at a time. And so that's why I think I'm actually moving away. Um, it's been a while since I've had anything besides dinners while backpacking. I just found that having um, snacks throughout the day made me feel so much better. Um, than when I was sitting and having a breakfast, sitting and having a lunch. And, you know, it kind of makes sense, eating a little bit at a time. Um, if you are, this is number eight, if you are a, um, a um, you know, an accomplished athlete, if you are in, in shape, you're, you know, you're never going to replace 100% of what you are, are losing. You know, at best, you can, you can suck in, you can take in about 30% of the calories that you're losing every hour, um, about 30% of the sodium that you're losing every hour. So again, trying to replace everything that you're losing during the day, it's, it's a lost cause. Um, number nine, and I think I already said this one too in another answer, is that if you have more than 300 calories per hour, again, my size, your performance is going to decrease. And I actually experimented with that, and I, I did. I just, I felt like now that I've done both, I've eaten too little and I've eaten too much. I can, I've now discovered like this sweet spot where I just feel so much better when I'm out on the trail. I didn't realize that I didn't feel 100%. I just always thought that's just normal. And it wasn't until I actually cut back some food during the day that I started feeling better. Um, number 10, if you are eating a lot of very simple junk sugars, um, your body does need more water to process that. And so please be careful because what will happen is that if you eat you know, that package of Twizzlers and you don't have enough water to help process that, your body will take in water, um, your gut will take in water from the rest of your body, take in electrolytes, and it kind of helps dehydrate you and you lose electrolytes and obviously that's not good. Um, number, number 11. After about, and this is for tough hiking, I just want to stress that out. If you are, stress that, if you are just hiking down some rail trail or you're doing easy hiking, this, this doesn't, it just doesn't matter, this, a lot of this stuff, and especially this one. But if you're going for more than two hours at a really good clip, I know a lot of, I've seen some people um, on their videos when they hit Connecticut and the Appalachian Trail, they try to do the, all of Connecticut in 24 hours because it's a 50 mile stretch. Like those people you can see in their videos, like they're pushing it. By the end of the day, they're stressed. And once you go more than two hours of pushing your body like that, your body stops using glucose for its energy and it starts using protein, like between five and I think it's like 15% of what your body is using for energy is protein. And if you don't provide that protein, your body will start scavenging it from the body. And long story short, that scavenging produces ammonia and that ammonia leads to muscle fatigue. So if you are hiking long-term, it is not just candy that's gonna keep you going. 
you do have to add in some protein. And um, soy protein does, uh, I forgot the chemical uh, that's produced, but soy protein it tends to be the easiest on your body um, with the least amount of negative effects. Not necessarily at the end of the day, but while you're hiking. I can't remember the thing that it produces, doesn't produce, but anyway. So soy protein tends to be one of the best for while you're hiking. Um, number 12, number 12. This one I think is so interesting. Um, if you are an untrained person, so you're not really in shape and you're just gonna go backpacking, your muscles hold 500 grams of glucose. And again, that's what your, your body starts using right away. If you are in shape, you, know, you wanna call yourself a trained athlete, trained backpacker, your body can hold double that in the muscles. So again, your body's freaking amazing. It just, you know, it just, it adjusts to whatever kind of stress it puts it under. A um, hundred grams of that is in your liver. And so a hundred grams of your carbohydrates that are stored uh, in your liver, the rest of it is in your muscle. And if you, you know, sit around all day long, that glucose is still being stored in your muscles, but your brain is wiping out the glucose that's in your liver. And so that's why I think sometimes, um, I know especially with like energy gels and stuff, um, you know, if someone's about to like go off on, I don't know, after lunch or something and they suck down an energy gel, they're like, oh, it makes me feel so much better. It doesn't. It's giving you a shot to your brain and you're getting like a brain high, but it's not going to your actual muscles because you're still depleted. Um, all right. Number, I already said that once, so now I'm number off. Um, not sure if I said this one or not and part of another answer. So let's just call this number 15. So 15. Um, if you do, t actually I said that one, let's skip that one. Um, I said that one, I said that one, holy cow, I must, I didn't go by my numbers here, I'm sorry. And, oh, here's one, I'm skipping right to 19, so I don't know, I already said the other ones before that. Number 19, if you eat a lot of sodium in your diet normally, you will actually sweat out more sodium when you are backpacking. So if you eat a low sod sodium diet, you actually sweat out less sodium and then therefore you need less sodium to keep you going. The amount of sodium that your body stores is pretty ridiculous anyway. Um, but I, th I thought that was an amazing sort of fact. It would seem like, I don't know, to go the opposite way for some reason that you can like eat, eat, eat salty, salty stuff and your body's storing it. But if you, if you already have that sort of diet, bam, you just, you sweat out so much more salt. And um, <clears throat> anything that you sweat out is different from person to person. It's kind of interesting too. Um, all right, and I forgot. I, you know what? I think I've I, I've gone off my numbers. My apologies. Um, but the last, let's go skip right to twenty-two because I can see that I've already said twenty and twenty-one. So number twenty-two, the number of calories in the food is not the number of calories that your body gets. And so I think a lot of times. You'll see people now doing a lot more calorie counting. Um, <clears throat> you'll see people on backpacking videos saying, all right, I just came out of the store and here's my 4,200 calories. Well, the problem is that, you know, when you eat it is going to determine how many calories and how much energy you actually get from it. The type of food is going to determine it. The calories that is in celery are going to be very different than the calories in potato chips. So the calories in celery are pretty tough to get at. The, the calories and potato chips are pretty easy to get at. So you can't just simply calorie count. You gotta consider all sorts of things, what kind of food it is, and uh, when you're eating it, what's your body currently doing. So that was a totally, I don't know, in my head, this was a nice, neat video. I can see on the time, I've already hit 15 minutes again. If you're still with me at this point, you are still crazy. I appreciate your time. Hopefully you found uh, a fact or two in here that was interesting and something that you could use. All right. Uh, until the next video, see ya.